welcome everyone to Women Waves. Uh, we've got some lovely ladies on today. Um, we've got the lovely Hannah van der Vesthazen. Uh, if you introduce us, tell us what you've been up to. Um, well, first off, amazing pronunciation of my surname there, Leash. <laughs> I can tell you've been practicing <laughs> and it's paid off. Um, I'm in a show currently with the wonderful Alicia uh, called Fate the Wink Saga on Netflix. Um, and we filmed that about a year ago and then obviously the apocalypse happened. So it's been a lot of kind of writing and trying to stay creative in that time. And, and yeah, holding out until season two, I guess, like trying to pick up and stay creative and maybe do a couple of other bits. And then we've also got, um, the wonderful Shantae Scott. What have you been up to Shantae? Hi, so, um, you know, I'm in secondary school, so I've still got online work to do. So online school is kind of what I do during the week. Um, I've recently set up a blog page on Instagram, which has oh, been wow. really exciting for me. And I feel like it gives me something to do. It gives me a sense of achievement as well, because I love writing. And yeah, so that's been really fun. Um, I've also learned how to do my own hair. So I also, you know, when I get bored, sometimes I just do my hair or I do my sister's hair or my mum's hair um so yeah it's been really fun getting to like learn new skills amazing what's your blog about um so i'm gonna make it about the life of a teenager basically the um, struggles that teenagers go through um you know secondary school life things that happen at school and so yes yeah, mostly about young people oh i wish i had that when i was at school <laughs> I needed I definitely needed a guide when I was going through school for sure and and finally we have the wonderful Grace Veenman tell us about yourself what you've been up to tell us about the girls network I am Grace and I am a network manager in London at the girls network so um at the girls network our mission is to inspire and empower girls just like Shantae by connecting them up to a professional um mentor who is in um, the working world and I have the privilege of working directly with the girls so I work in over we in London we work with over 20 schools in London and um, wow. over about 450 girls every year so I myself work with about 150 of those and it's just such a privilege to as you just heard from Shantae hear these incredible ideas that these young women have and then to pair them with equally incredible women and just to see you know, how much potential there can be with these relationships that they develop over the course of a year. So it's, yeah, it's a brilliant job that I have. And um, yeah, great to be here with Shantae as well. Yeah, that sounds amazing. So question, if Shantae decided that she wanted to, instead of um, do this blog, she then wanted to become a business lady and do accounting, um, would you pair her up with someone different to the person she was already paired up with? Often the relationships that we kind of, the matches that we make aren't always down to the industry that the mentor works in. So obviously that is great if the mentor works in the industry that the girl's interested in. But as we know, kind of goals change, ambitions change as we learn and grow new skills. And um, what we really encourage our mentors to do, and I know they're really brilliant at this, is actually make connections for the girls. So help them bring up, like build their own networks. So say, for example, if Shantae tomorrow said, you know what, I really want to explore a career in the NHS. Well, then her mentor could kind of dip into our network of really fantastic women, find a woman who works yeah. in the NHS, and then they could have a conversation together. Um, and I think it's a really nice way just to show the girls that it's okay to change your mind. And, you know, there's no kind of fixed path. And we actually encourage our mentors to, you know, show the girls beyond their own career and really just open their eyes to some different pathways. Um, and Shantae, did you do this with your mentor? You met up with another uh, another woman? Um, yeah, so... We went to the Ivy Cafe where she introduced me to a journalist called Hannah Betts. Um, so it was really interesting to meet her and she talked about how she got to that position that she's in now. Um, I know that she writes for The Times and The Telegraph. Um, so she also gave me one of the articles that she wrote. She gave me some of her newspapers that she's written in. Um, so yeah, it was really interesting to meet her. Amazing. And did that inspire you to make the blog? I did have a blog um, a while before I actually came into the girls networking program um but I kind of stopped or I felt like oh it's, there's no point because nobody's going to read it or nobody be interested and when I got into the program and I met my mentor she kind of gave me the confidence to be able to make the blog and she also has a blog as well so she knew what she could help me with and how I could like lay it out as well so I kind of think it was a confidence thing and that's why I felt more empowered to make the blog 
amazing. How did you first hear about the Girls Network? Um, so from school, I kind of got picked, a group of girls got picked for who they would think would be right for this program. And it was also my best friend who's also in the Girls Networking program who kind of convinced me because when I first got the letter, I thought I didn't really... I wasn't really interested. I just thought this is something the school's doing for me. I didn't really remember that I had received the letter. And then um, my best friend was like, Shante, I think it'd be really good for you. You know, you're always talking about your future and new experiences. I think this would be really, really, really good for you. So then I filled out the form and yeah, I went and it turned out to be great. That's amazing. With your blog writing, do you do other types of writing as well? So uh, did you say that you're into poems? Um, Yeah, so I love writing. I think ever since I could write, I've wanted to write. Like, it's just been something I'm so passionate about. Um, I remember not as much now, but I... I write poems, songs, stories, anything. Whenever I could write, I would just write. And obviously, coming into secondary school, I think with English, because that's my favourite subject, there's more of a structure to your writing. And I feel like sometimes it can take away a bit of your creativity because Mm. in primary schools, like, you could write about anything you wanted... But I still keep it up and the blog obviously helps me to keep writing. I still write poems when sometimes I want to get my feelings down or express my feelings onto paper. So, yeah, I still write poems sometimes. I still try to write stories. I think sometimes I just have less time because of school. Mm. But it's still something that I'm really passionate about. Oh, I love it. Hannah, are you still writing? Yeah, no, I am. I also kind of similarly when I was at school, like I wrote a bit, but I think it's I was just listening then it's so nice to to hear because when I was younger it kind of wasn't uh celebrated to think about your future I feel like it wasn't particularly cool to have interests outside of you know just your social life um and I really feel like that's a shift that's happened since since I was in school so first off that makes me really really happy um and second of all like I really relate with uh finding it helpful to have structure whether that's you know just being in a class like you know if you're still in school or if you're taking a class outside of that um or even just having a specific project like sometimes I'm like I'm gonna write a book today you know what it's a collection of poems now oh look it's a feature film (laughs) I'm like I need to stick to one thing so it's definitely really nice that you're getting that structure at school too yeah I definitely I think I did like a couple of outside school things but that wasn't by choice that was because (laughs) that was because my my mum was working so (laughs) Um, no, I think it's really helpful. I, d- I definitely wouldn't have been able to like get into acting if I hadn't done any outside mm. activities. Well, I was going to ask, did you do you find Hannah with your writing? Does that kind of go side by side with the acting? Yeah, oh, for sure. I mean, I, I feel like for me, the thing that I find easiest about writing is dialogue because I mean, I've spent a lot of time studying how people talk. I've read a lot of plays in my life and obviously done... TV and and film work as well and it's more like getting the structure of a story and all of the all of the things that I consider to be slightly uh more admin-y when it comes to writing (laughs) um but also like when I write it's because I'm angry about something or I want to play a part that otherwise I am not finding um I recently had this hang up of being like I don't know how I'm going to do it but I need to write something about like an utterly despicable woman who is so irredeemable because we've seen that in men like um American Psycho you know Mm. I want the female version of that I read a really great book called Boy Parts by Eliza Clark and she is like such a despicable character uh female and I was like, where's that in, in telly? Like, everyone's so redeemable. And yeah. those are the sort of things that make me mm-hmm. want to write, I guess. Yeah. What we'll do is we'll play a little game where we just make a movie together and we'll decide who goes in the movie, who direct it. Um, you've got all the budget you could ever, ever want. Um, so who would you have in it? What would it be about? What would the genre be? I mean, we've got a despicable woman, it seems. Yes. Yeah. I was just about to say, we started it already. <laughs> yeah. So, Hannah, I, I assume you would be thy despicable woman. Um, <laughs> I mean, I would, I would love that, but I feel... Or would you direct or write it? That would be a delight too. I mean, it's so... I would love to actually produce a film on which like I am not necessarily in it or directing it or anything, but you get to, I suppose, be mm. the one 
who everyone is has to turn to for decisions that would be <laughs> that would be my Virgo <laughs> dream that's cool <laughs> <laughs> all the power Virgo power yeah essentially in terms of who I would love to cast oh, I really love um Beanie Feldstein like I think for me at the moment she's like someone who I really can't get enough of and I don't know if that's just because Mm. I think she's really funny and I think she brings something really different and she's not you know I suppose she's doing really well at the moment but she's not everywhere and in everything and it's I just I really enjoy when I Mm. can watch a project that she's in so maybe I cast her as as my lead her or, you know, in a dream, I'd also stick Michaela Cole in any project I was in because oh, yeah. who isn't obsessed with her? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, she has been brought up in every single episode of this podcast. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, you can't you can't not bring bring her up. She's too inspiring. Yeah. yeah. Especially for the young the women that we work exactly. with. I mean, she just started such an incredible conversation that I know was exactly. So, necessary. so I think, yeah, in terms of what I would find really interesting in a project like this, like budget aside, um, how could we find some young talent to get involved? Mm. You know, could we try and encourage someone who's actually maybe not had a, yeah. a kind of platform before, um, someone like Shantae to kind of get involved or someone, you know, do a bit of a, use the budget to do a call out and try and find some really incredible um, raw talent that, you know, you could get on board and bring them all together with a fantastic producer like Hannah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. And Shantae, would your movie be a, I haven't actually seen a movie with a female poet before. I think that'd be quite cool to see. Yeah, I think it would. Um, or you could make the whole the whole script could be poetry, so you could make like a spoken words film. I think um, one of the like I watched a play Hamilton. I watched that, oh, and yeah. obviously it's just two hours of singing. So the storyline is just songs, and I think that was really really cool. I was I thought I was going to be a bit like, oh, am I going to fall asleep? Is this going to be too annoying? But it was really really cool. The storyline was quite modern as well. They included rap, mm. hip hop, and all sorts of things. And mm. it was literally the storyline was just songs. And I think so it would be cool to see like a, a play or a movie with just poetry, kind of like spoken word throughout yeah. as the storyline. That would be really cool. I also think for a female lead, Emma Watson is probably one of my favourite actresses um Harry Potter obviously is where I first saw her and I love (laughs) Harry Potter I think it's one of the best movie franchises ever um um, Emma Watson she just the way she acts the way she is um I've seen a couple interviews with her as well and obviously she's um you know activist for feminism as well and she's just amazing I love Emma Watson I love that she is brilliant which what's your favourite Harry Potter film it would have to be Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix I love that one just because um you see Harry Potter teaching everyone and I feel like a lot of people don't get to see when he's like in the spotlight when he's fighting and when he's defeating Voldemort nobody gets to see it and I feel like sometimes that's why it makes them doubt him so I feel like that one was really good Mm, that was a good one it gets like quite a lot more darker doesn't it as they go on so like when you compare the last film to the first film it's like a completely different genre yeah I know someone who just wrote um an essay on uh feminism in Harry Potter Mm. oh yeah and they were like it's it's crazy because there's a lot of females who are just like the typical female who's upset like moaning myrtle Mm. and even when you first see um professor mcgonagall she's like crying or something so there was a Mm. there was a lot of that um i thought it was really interesting yeah i suppose it's it's interesting as well around like feminism that even comes from jk rowling with everything that's happened with her uh and what she has to say about trans women and I think it's really empowering with Emma Watson and a lot of the other members of the cast how they've come forward and been like even though this has changed my life as it definitely you know Shantae I'm assuming it's changed yours it definitely changed mine you know that can still exist and I can still disagree with the views of the the person who created it um because I think it's got so many brilliant redeeming qualities even though that is something that you know I'm pretty sure all of us will disagree with Mm mm-hmm yeah okay so we've got two movies going on budget is off the scales <laughs> hannah's <laughs> producing shante is in thy movie doing spoken word or shante would you have written it Ooh. because you write poetry as well mm. as maybe you could just do both to be honest yeah <laughs> yeah i could do both i think I, I think i could pull that off i think i could do it do you reckon we could have this this um character that you were saying hannah 
in the spoken word, doing spoken word. I'm here for that. A hundred percent. I also love Hamilton. I think it's such a wonderful um, like celebration of, of, well, I mean, obviously something that's so old school, well, not old school, literally from, from, <laughs> from like, is it the 1800s? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and brought together with such like modern, brilliant music that in a similar sort of fashion, it sounds very like spoken word Shakespeare-esque mm. and bring it in with yeah. some, some modern new talent and stuff. That sounds fantastic. I'll be there for that. Great. Should we pick it up next week? We'll start doing it next week and we'll, yeah. get, we'll get it going. This sounds so good. <laughs> Please do. I can put the call out out and amongst all our girls. They're, they're gonna Amazing. Come forward. We're going to get some great like photographers. Fantastic. And, you know. <laughs> we love to see it. So, Hannah, what is the funniest experience you've ever had on set? Because you, oh, you, you've been on set a couple of times now. <laughs> yes, yes, just a few. Um, the funniest experience I've ever had on set? Uh, probably, oh gosh. I imagine there was a lot, when, when we were filming uh, for Fate, a lot of the time, because we got on really, really well, it was very hard not to corpse and not to, to <laughs> catch each other's eyes and make each other laugh, especially when it was things like imagining an epic transformation that was actually just like a tennis ball on a stick. And I could just feel like people standing near to me, like shaking and you're so desperately trying to be professional because, you know, amazing opportunities and you want to be the best and work really hard. Um, mm. and, you, and it just makes trying not to laugh so much worse. <laughs> Yeah. 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 It's just, it's so like once you get a good cast, I think it's so much nicer. Um and you just have the best yeah. time. It's just like being in a family. Totally. And the chemistry as well you can't account for. Like I think there's so much in that. If I ever was doing a show, like creating a show, I would love to have the opportunity, you know, like they did with friends and like they did with, with us actually, where we had a two week rehearsal period to really get to know each other and build that natural chemistry. Um, and obviously that's not always gonna be there for everyone, but if you can find that, that's something you can really kind of milk. And it's what I think makes projects so special, mm. like even in romance as well, when the romance is real, you can you can just feel it a lot more. Yeah, it's so nice. It's so, so nice. And Shante, how did you start writing poems? What what kind of poems do you write? Oh, wow. It's because it started from primary school. I know that we did creative writing. And whenever the teacher says, you know, you're going to write a poem today, I was always so excited. Um, my personal poems are usually about life, basically. Um, sometimes about how I'm feeling at the moment. Or I remember... I was, I think it was about two years ago, I was in English, I was just in an English class in school, and um, I had finished all my work, and the teacher had just said, oh, you're just going to have to wait for everyone else to finish, and I just, I had a scrap piece of paper, and I just started writing a poem, because that's what I do when I'm bored, and um, I found it like a couple months ago, and I realised that, oh, this is actually quite a good poem. So I wrote it down properly, I edited it, added to it. And it just made me think like, even when I wasn't really concentrating or I wasn't really, you know, trying to make a really good poem, it kind of just came out of me. And that's when I knew like, or I confirmed that writing is just something I'm really passionate mm. about. And even when I'm not thinking about it, I still have this passion for writing all the time. Yeah. Do you get inspired because of your surroundings or what? what is it you end up writing about? Um, yeah, so the poem that I did find actually, it was called Cocoon and it was about black lives and, um, you know, the Black Lives Matter mm-hmm. movement and everything happening with that. Um, some other poems I write, you know, it's, it's all to do with life, basically. Issues that are happening right now, um, you know, how it affects me as well, how it makes me feel... Uh, so it's literally just about the world and mm. what happens in the world. We had we had um, two women on last week. She got in touch with some young girls who did um, spoken word and write poetry and then made a whole film around it. Um, so it could be something that you think about or we could get you in touch and you can have a chat with them and try and do that. That would be really cool. Um, so, Hannah, you started really early in acting, didn't you? Yeah, I was quite young, I guess. Well, the reason I 
got into acting is because my mum was a dancer and obviously that has um kind of an age cap on uh, as a career mm. and she went back to do her a levels afterwards and she went and took her drama a levels and in doing that i kind of watched her and was like i want to do that that looks really fun mm. and so she took me along to her classes and it kind of happened that i ended up getting a little bit of work out of it as a kid mm. um but then I'm really glad she, she sent me to school and she was like, I don't want you to act when you're getting your education. I want you to focus, see if there's anything else that you want to do. And kind of like you say, Shante, like I think you you look back on stuff with a bit of time. Obviously, it's, it's slightly more obvious when you've got a piece of writing or something, which also is so nice when you look back at a piece of writing. You're like, this is way better than I remember it being. Um, but I think you can do that with, with talents and other skills as well, where you're like, actually... I'm good at this and I should be doing this. And it's good because I think retrospect kind of gives you confidence and the space to really securely make that decision rather than being like, oh, I've never tried anything else. Mm -hmm. So taking a break is is sometimes a good thing. Mm -hmm. How do you find, Hannah, do you ever struggle with like nerves? How do you get over your nerves if you have to, when you're auditioning, oh. <laughs> or, even when you're on set? Um, oh, Brahman, I struggle terribly with nerves. I think first off, I probably am... I'm, I'm not great at, at, at expressing when I need help kind of as a person, mm. but my advice would always be to ask for help, whether mm. that's, you know, because you're feeling nervous or, or just anything that might be coming up for you in, in any moment, I guess. But um, in terms of, in terms of nerves, I think it's probably imposter syndrome and, and those sort of things that, that get you and, mm it's that thing of just affirming to yourself like what have I done what are the things that I know to be true I know I worked really hard I know I got this audition and I nailed it and they hired me and I know that I've done this amount of research and I know that I have you know I deserve to be here for all of these reasons and kind of reiterating those things to to reassure yourself and and land in your self-esteem I think is helpful mm. in those moments. Was it quite nice to have because obviously for um, Winx a lot of this was a lot of you it was your first role so did it help having other people around you that mm. you know you were all kind of in this similar position? Yeah I think so I think it's always really there are pros and cons to any situation like it's it's really nice to work with someone who has, is, has been working forever because they'll teach you a million things without even having to teach you. Um, and, you know, if, if everyone's new, mm. you can all relate and hold each other up. But then, you know, nerves do catch on each other when everyone's new. And, and sometimes people, um, myself included, have um, bad oh, habits, I guess you would call them, that you kind of need to lose over time. Same as when I was at drama school you know things that just kind of fall out that you realize aren't helpful mm. like self-criticism or saying like was that okay you know and those are the things that you kind of lose over time so I guess there's like pros and cons to to, to both situations and just trying to focus on the pros always helps yeah <laughs> do you think as a female in the industry they kind of ask you different things to how they ask the men yeah so if they would ask you more about your clothes or your makeup or your hair yeah totally and I tell yeah, you what I watch a lot of those interviews yeah yeah well you should because they are the best interviews when women shoot them down I absolutely love that I've seen those like Scarlett Johansson and when they're like well are you gonna ask the men the same question I think things like how do you balance your home life with your work oh yawn so boring first of all second of all it's such a shame because I think it detracts on both sides because things like fashion and all of that, I think they can be other forms of creative self-expression, right? And a shame first that men aren't asked that because what, being feminine is a weakness? That's, again, yawn, very boring. But like, it's it's a shame that they don't bother to find out the nuances to whether or not a woman finds that to be like a creative part of their self-expression or if it's just not relevant to them and they should be asking them about their writing or if they're into poetry rather than gender assigning these sort of topics. Um, but I think, you know, the fact that you're aware of that and you're you're watching those videos now, like I wasn't aware when I was your age, that makes yeah. me feel really excited for when you're having those interviews about your work in the future. It is incredible. For and sure. you're 16, aren't you, Shante? Yeah. So the fact that you're like thinking about this this stuff already is just yeah. so incredible. And it's so good as well for like, you know, even though we're older, 
like that that's so inspiring to know that like the next wave of people who are coming through because it, it, it does it all is a cycle like we all support and empower each other it's it's really refreshing so thank you for that <laughs> do you have any other questions Shante? because you're killing it <laughs> oh also also you're 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 a wannabe journalist so <laughs> this is your time <laughs> <laughs> um, I did want to ask if you always wanted to be an actress or did you have another dream as a child and you know it changed yeah um, I think I oh I, th- I imagine it was always there because dramatic kind of person in case you can't tell <laughs> um, but I, I did temporarily want to go into economics but I wasn't very good at maths I was actually a lot better at English um, I really enjoyed English like you uh, I really loved studying poetry as well. But very often people will sort of say like, oh, how is that a tangible career? And it's and you can get really lost in being like, it's finance the thing that's most important when you choose a career. I would argue it's it's not. But for some people, you know, because of their upbringing or, you know, maybe they have to support family members, it's different for everyone. But I kind of ended up being like, acting is the thing that I'm good at and obviously you know it's hard when you go oh I did it by default but I think when you're like this is this is what I meant to do and I'm really unhappy if I don't do this thing um so Mm -hmm. yeah that's that's probably why I now do it same same (laughs) would you ever would you want to get into acting Shante um it's oh it's like when I was younger I I wanted to be everything like um when I would I would you know I'd just be using my imagination I would write down actress slash author slash loads of other things um and it was on my mind because obviously everyone everyone told me that I was dramatic <laughs> oh you need to be an actress Shante because you're so dramatic I can relate um I don't know I feel like it's something that I wouldn't mind like if there was an opportunity for me I feel like I wouldn't mind exploring it um you know I feel like obviously and that's another question that I should ask as well like you know the pitfalls that come with being famous or being in the public I um because as I grew up I started to understand more the difficulties of being you know famous and being popular and being in the public eye you know it there's a lot of hardships to it as well you know the paparazzi taking pictures and people like propaganda you know people kind of making up things or exaggerating things in the press or you know so you know I had to learn all those things and kind of make that decision for myself like if I was going to go into that area or if I was going to be you know in the public eye how I would act and how I would face all those difficulties as well but Mm. it's something that I'd be open to I think. I was going to ask like if if you because that's such an interesting thing and I think about this all the time you know just being an actor and watching other actors be scrutinized for things which I don't think are relevant or important like their Mm. size or their beauty or whatever but when you think about that, you know, in a large concept, do you think that's still like, I suppose, building of your self-esteem to 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 be placed not on those things? Do you kind of practice that at school in, in terms of like your friendship groups and stuff like that? I think personally as well, like it's something that I think about because, you know, I, I watch a lot of TV. I watch, watch a lot of movies. I have a lot of, you know, favourite actresses and things. And I kind of look at all of them and how they react to you know mean comments online and stuff like that and in interviews like I've watched um, someone who I love you know I I watched Disney Channel as a, a child and Zendaya was someone I really loved because she was very you know even when she became really popular really famous she kind of humbled herself and I liked the way that she um responded to mean tweets and she kind of just didn't care and she had to brush it off but I think that is something you have to learn to do because a lot of people can't be like that and the way that people are mean to celebrities or comment on their pictures I, that's like it's really hard to get that and you know you have millions of followers and you have so many people saying you know you oh you look big in this or you know you don't look pretty or you filter or all sorts of things and so it's really really hard and I feel like your mindset you have to really drill it into yourself to say it doesn't matter or I can do this and things like that so it's something that I have to think about that if I was ever have to face that how would I react to it Mm. or you know how would I have to present myself do you personally feel this way or do you have conversations about this with your pals like Hannah said like do you talk about it at school is it something um yeah you know me and my the friendship group I have I really like my friendship group because we can have these type of discussions like we 
you know the type of people we are even if i don't necessarily like something a celebrity has done in the past or you know they've said something that i may not like i've never or we have never decided we should comment underneath their picture or send them a message a mean message i've never just thought that within myself because i just think what's it going to do you know is i don't think it does anything so we do have those conversations sometimes you know we talk about even when we talk about oh i didn't really like when the celebrity did this we have that in our personal discussion but we never go and put it onto social media so that the person can see it Mm -hmm. it just I don't think it does anything I think it's not really your place to do that you know they're going through their own things we don't know them personally so yeah we do have those discussions as friends you know um we all want to be different things when we grow up and I just feel like it's something to kind of take into consideration because even if you don't want to be like an actress or a singer like for me whatever I grow up to be I kind of want to be known for something so that's why I think about it because I still in my head as like I do want to be known I want people to kind of know my name and know what I've done so it's something that I have to think about because I've seen it you know on tv on social media I've seen all those things and it's something that I have to take into consideration as well. Hannah when getting into acting what are the hardships you've found like what is it that has like pulled you back sometimes or um well actually I suppose one thing that I is really again just inspiring and lovely to listen to you say Shantae is like I think I worry so much about what um other people think and what um I don't know not being perfect or not getting it right and I think that's such a, um, a ridiculous standard because I would again similarly like never uphold another celebrity or any sort of a successful person to, to that kind of standard. I think even if someone gets something wrong, it's, you know, I believe in redemption, I believe in change. And that's why I think cancel culture is ridiculous um, because it suggests that people don't make mistakes. And I think if we hold our society in that kind of light, how can you expect people to take risks and try and become an actor and, and maybe it doesn't go their way? You know, I think it, we've got to be more forgiving and um, I guess that's probably the thing that I found really difficult but I also found I faced loads of scrutiny like getting into the industry around like body weight and uh, body image and even though you know I'm aware that like I'm very palatable in the society that we live in um, it it, even still I managed to face like some really hot like harsh scrutiny around that so again like striving for that level of perfection is just is nothing but toxic and unhealthy to see both on the screen and then reflected in our society i guess what i've realized i think is that people always have something to say like i feel like no matter what anyone does they have something to say you know if someone takes a picture without makeup it's like oh she needs to put on makeup if she wears makeup oh you don't love yourself you're insecure i feel like it's not like I feel like there's not a lot of winning you can't really win with people because they just always have something to say no matter what you do and I just feel like it's I don't really I don't understand it fully why people do that that's somewhat empowering in itself though like you know when you know that you're like well it doesn't matter what I do because people are like if you what's that really great quote like if every if no one dislikes you for what you're doing you're doing your job wrong Mm, yeah like Mm -hmm. do something that makes people hate you not obviously something horrible but like push the boundaries (laughs) I doubt everyone was watching Michaela Cole's I May Destroy You and went oh this is great and I feel comfortable in fact I think most of the men who I spoke to were like yeah I struggle to watch it because it really Mm -hmm. shines a light on something that is deeply uncomfortable so kind of if you are pushing those boundaries and making people Mm -hmm. feel riled up to write comments or whatever if it's in the right way you're probably doing your job right absolutely (laughs) Mm -hmm. and I think it's like pushing through those comments and just doing what what you want to do anyway because you're you're all such creative people and I think you know that's the focus is your work and the stuff that you're able to create and all that stuff where you know there there is always going to be things that people have to say Mm -hmm. and not everyone is going to like what you do but it's Mm -hmm. deciding to not let that stop you and doing it anyway especially I think inspiring especially for any girls that are listening in um because you know we see perfectionism from such a young age and I'm sure Shantae um you'll have experienced that Mm -hmm. kind of at a young age at school and it's just really refreshing to hear especially you Hannah talk about and also Shantae I'd love you to be my mentor. What you're sharing is so inspiring to hear that 
at, you know, learning so much right now from you in terms of what, you know, it's just important to stay true to yourself. And it's OK if some people disagree with that. And what, you know, an empowering message for some of the young women who might be listening in. It's so amazing, especially because we do have all these social platforms that I didn't have or Hannah, yourself, Bramwin, we, Grace, didn't have when we were younger. Um, that it's now a platform of perfection like there's yeah. never any bad days on social media it's always showing the best light of everything um so how are you meant to live up to these standards when it's okay to have a bad day and it's okay to do these other things i think it's amazing that you have this um mind at the moment shante where you know that um you, this awareness you, yeah this awareness yeah. i think it's amazing i was gonna ask shante how because like alicia said when we when we were your age we didn't have these extra pressures that i do think although there's a lot of good sides to social media there is obviously a lot of of like not so good stuff as well so for someone that's you know still in school how how do you find social media like how has that played a part in your life in school and like in general i think it Although I am on social media, because it sounds weird for me to say that I dislike it, you know, I I am Mm. on it, but I kind of miss the mindset that I had or a lot of us had when we were in primary school and I didn't have Snapchat, I didn't have Instagram, I didn't have, I had like a Blackberry or something (laughs) where we played games on. It wasn't, there wasn't any of the social media, we didn't really take pictures. I remember in primary school, our mindset was that we didn't really care how anybody looked. We came into school and we came to have fun. It was literally mm-hmm. not about your hair looks this way today. You're not do like, it was never about that. And coming into secondary school, it was so different because once I got into social media, everyone's on it. I feel like your mindset changes, even if you don't realize it has, it really has changes, like things that you focus on. You know, we didn't focus on those things before. We never cared, but it's like, people see it more now it's like oh look at her she looks like this today or she looks like this and I'm not going to pretend that I'm perfect because I'm not and I know that when I was younger probably year seven and eight there were things that I said or done that I shouldn't have done or I shouldn't have thought about or maybe I shouldn't have said that to that person in that way and I know that I have matured now and I see things differently like even when people are wearing certain things and you know and I hear people saying oh look at what she's wearing I think in my head you don't know what that person's going through. That person may not have the means to get, you know, the latest clothes or follow the latest trends. They might not be able to. So I kind of, my mindset's kind of changed from how it was. But I think social media, you know, it is good for a lot of things, you know, certain situations, um, you know, now we can video things so that people can see it and we can see like, oh, this is wrong. Like, you know, what happened with them? George Floyd and everything the fact that it was caught on video was a good thing Mm. um but I do think it does have a lot of downfalls you know people can say things to you behind a screen um you know like you said it shows the the good sides of things so everyone posts their best pictures or you can even photoshop your pictures and stuff like that and I feel like Mm. also fake news as well on social media a lot of people you know a lot of people my age believe everything that they see on snapchat or instagram as soon as is posted and some things are exaggerated or some things are fake and for me I've like learned how to deal with social media in my own way um you know when I do see things it's like okay let me go and search this up let me go and ask my parents about it to you know see the right side of it or if it's true or not so that I'm not sucked in too much Mm -hmm. into it um yeah during lockdown as well obviously I'm at home and it's like all I have is my phone kind of but I've tried to log out sometimes. There's There was like oh, two weeks where I said, okay, I'm going to log out of my Snapchat account. I'm going to log out of Instagram. I'm just going to find other things to do. If you're tempted to log in, read a book, write, you know, I've spent more time with my family. So I've kind of found my own ways to deal with the pitfalls of social media. But I still think it's a, a real problem within young people and maybe even older people as well. So yeah, I've kind of developed my own method into dealing with it that's so good to hear because yeah it just wasn't as big of a thing for us was it when we were that age so I think it sounds like you're really dealing with it dealing with it but like handling the situation of you know the downsides to it quite well I was just going to say which is amazing considering it's it's a tool to take your attention Mm -hmm. so 
um it's amazing that you've decided not to give your attention yeah. to it that really does take the power back i was just going to say it's interesting because i think for us when we were growing up we we didn't like especially the fake news thing we didn't necessarily have social media and people giving out their their personal forms of this is this is the way that we want you to view life but we kind of were brought up on like um you know even the stuff that's resurfacing with britney the way that the media just kind of manipulated people to dislike women and you couldn't even figure out like oh i find that woman annoying why do i find her annoying and then you go back and you're like oh all the photos of her she looks angry even though she's not an angry person mm. or whatever and i think it's those things the way that like the mm. subtle messages of like repeatedly seeing things in a certain way like whether that's everyone having a perfect life or a woman looking consistently mm -hmm. aggressive um because she's like a, an advocate or something like that you know just that awareness around what you're consuming is mm -hmm. so empowering and so important because you have like it is insidious if you don't have that awareness you can really um be tricked into having these thoughts and opinions that aren't necessarily yours mm. or founded on any fact yeah so that's nice to hear. <laughs> yeah it really is so i had a question for you hannah how do you get into character so ha have you got any like specific ways or you know how do you how do you do it yeah i went to um a drama school called drama center uh oh yeah wh yeah which its nickname is trauma center because <laughs> it was 12 hours a day five to six days a week and you would just stay and work yourself to the point of delusion um which i think builds up a really good work ethic but it's not absolutely necessary <laughs> um <laughs> So for, for us, there was like, you know, when you prep a character, you create like a diary, you have this thing called the 100 questions, which, you know, is what it, what it says on the tin. It's 100 questions so that, you know, every little intimate detail about your character, whether that's what they had for breakfast or the most uh, memorable Christmas they ever had, you know, all of these little things that add layer upon layer for, for these, these characters. Um, so whenever I'm prepping a character I'll do that but to to kind of explicitly get into a character I love to use music um or even uh smells I find quite useful like I quite I quite enjoy having like a perfume or something that really links to a character mm. um because you just kind of can trick yourself a bit more it's almost like like playing trying to go back to being a kid again mm. um those moments where you can just really sit in pretending that you're playing mums and dads or whatever but obviously a bit further than that in, <laughs> when you're in a professional job. <laughs> what's um, your favourite character you've ever played, Hannah? Or like, what's, yeah, what's the character that you kind of just really got into and really felt? Mm, the f my favourite character I ever played, um, I think probably uh, Nora in a Doll's House was, was always my favourite, mainly because, you know, like, I, I feel like that really kind of, brought on my my feminism and made me sort of step into it quite heavily when prepping which is obviously something that's that's really nice I think whenever you're doing a project where it, whether you're writing or or I don't know even studying it at school whatever it is and um, when it kind of starts to inform your like core beliefs in life I think that creates like a really really like another level of excitement and uh, investment in the project and um, at the time I was living with um, a partner and we had you know a happy relationship but I, I it, it kept sending me into these thoughts of like imagine if I wasn't happy and imagine if I couldn't leave and all of these other things that you know that's definitely been something that's been huge especially during lockdown for many people and it just has kind of continuously in waves or I've always thought about that part and always thought about that play and how timeless it is considering it was written by a man way back when um so I think I think that's probably my favorite uh, part and I was at drama school for that you get to play the best parts when you're not being hired quite often mm. um, which is why it's important to always keep reading always keep learning even if you're doing that professionally yeah. go to class do whatever it's, it's good how can we advance female empowerment within the industry bloody put Shantae at the front of everything <laughs> 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 yes, oh my gosh I, I, 
I'm so excited. Um, you know, I think even though like having people who are just so aware at the front of any sort of project is, is instantly going to create, yeah. um, you know, things that empower people who are younger and it, you know, it's, it's cyclical. Um, so yeah, I think that idea of, of using, if you have a, a lot of budget to bring through that, that new fresh talent and, and is a really, really good idea from Grace mm. earlier. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to be able to cast something because I know some amazing people that just haven't had their opportunity or chance. Like there's so many people. It's just a, a shame the pool hasn't grown. And I guess also that thing of if you start to cast different body types, different skin colours, different sexual orientations, you know, gender, everything, that will in turn make people who don't feel seen on the telly feel like they can be part of this industry, be part of Mm -hmm. this world in a way that they otherwise perhaps might not have felt, you know watching nothing but the kind of stuff that we watched when we were younger where everyone just looks the same Mm -hmm. um I think that is is so integral because again it's that media thing of like what you subconsciously start to believe and keep as core beliefs that only changes when like a swathe of of what we view in the media what we view on tv changes so Mm -hmm. just the more diversity the better I guess you're so right with that because we were talking I think it was last week's episode about Michaela Cole obviously (laughs) and how (laughs) I may destroy you it's you know so many people that watched that were saying how like it moved them and they felt something that wouldn't normally be watching things like that and i mm-hmm. think the the thing that needs to happen is the more shows that are made like that people will start to realize that is what they want to watch mm-hmm. yeah it's just because we're constantly fed all this other other stuff people don't realize and they think that's what they like if that makes sense but i think actually the more things that are going to be made will help change the perspective of so many people. Yeah. yeah. And I guess if you ask, if you recognise yourself on the telly all the time, like if you're like, oh, I see me on the TV all the time, go and watch a show where you don't see yourself at all. Because I guarantee yeah, it will yeah. be more interesting and exciting, first off and second of all, like it'll probably be good for those changing and reevaluating what, what you naturally believe in life, mm-hmm. you know, expanding your mind a yeah, bit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the experience is always different, isn't it? Mm. have you seen it's a sin no it's actually on my on my list it's just wonderful it's just a wonderful but also horrific subject um subject matter which is aids Mm. um but it's so well done by russell t davis it's just beautifully created yeah it's it's funny that actually i was talking to someone about um like AIDS and uh, I suppose like queer queer art because so often it's really like mm-hmm. not well archived so we lose a lot of, of queer art but one thing is I feel like I've always been really aware of it because it's quite prevalent in in theatre like a lot of uh theatre about the AIDS epidemic like I suppose like Angels in America and even Rent the Musical like they're really wildly mm-hmm. popular um and yet we kind of always seem to to lose it in in you know even like art and mm-hmm. things like that so I was I'm, that's why it's been on my list and I'm really glad to hear that it's so well done yes. because it's, yeah, it's yeah really really mm-hmm. perfectly done Grace as as uh you know someone who works for the girls network what message would you want to give to any young women that are thinking of joining or just just young women in general like what message would you want to share my main message to any girl that's listening and what I always say to the girls is just never self-select yourself out of a process you know always um, go for it it's very easy to have self-doubt and I think if you ask most people in their jobs and their careers when they went for the job when they went for the internship when they went for the role or the part they probably didn't think they were going to get it but then they got it and how amazing was that and the reason why they got it was because they they went for it and if you self-select yourself out before you even put yourself in the position to get it then you'll just never know so I think just always putting yourself forward and just giving the yeah you could that you can only but try and if you know you're not right for it then you're not right for it but at least you know just always put yourself That's forward That's good advice yeah it's brilliant advice what, what advice would you give Shante for anyone that's wanting to become a journalist or write a blog or go to the girls network or i feel like one of the things that i learned as well and that other young girls can learn is that your age doesn't limit you i feel like a lot of the times i thought that 
I'm too young to get these type of opportunities or I, I wouldn't be able to do anything at this age. I have to wait until I'm an adult and so forth. And I feel like it, it's not true. I don't think it's true. I feel like any opportunity you get and also to go out and look for opportunities as well. Sometimes they're not always going to come to you and sometimes you have to go out. And for me especially, I know that I want to try to expand my skills and have different experiences so that I can figure out what I like because I've always said that my dad says to me that you never know what you could enjoy but if you never try it how would you know that you enjoy it so having those new experiences and just putting yourself out there I think that's extremely important because no matter how old you are I feel like if you just put yourself out there and you grab every opportunity you can you're gonna be you're going to be surprised at what you could like or what you could do. And I think that that's amazing. I love that. Mm. That's great. And take Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just take for Prime Minister. I agree. Please. <laughs> you do a better job than the yes. current government. So. <laughs> <For sure. laughs> Hannah, Hannah, what would you say? And what, what would you, what advice would you give? I actually love what Chante said. I think that thing of being like, you just don't know if you're going to like something unless you try it. Um, I guess that the other thing that I would suggest is um, working out where you place your value and your self-esteem. And like when you walk into a room and you go, you know, we've all been to parties where you go, I, I, I feel like everyone here really cares about the way that they look. And I feel like I'm not bringing much to it because that's not where I place my value or whatever and being like well there is going to be a party where everyone cares about their politics and you know what I'm brushed up on my politics so I'm going to bring so much to that and just knowing that you want to surround yourself with people who have the same values as you and making sure that those values are kind of things that you can you can get yourself and are tangible and don't fade over time um just just trying to figure out what what brings you joy and is sustainable in in that regard and then when you have those things i genuinely think you know people sending mean comments or 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 hurdles that you have to overcome you you know your worth so it becomes everything becomes a bit easier maybe you should both run yeah i'm like i'm voting (laughs) (laughs) you two like a dream team i'm i'm in (laughs) yeah so brilliant Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. It's been such a pleasure chatting to you all. Thank you. We're going to play Shantae reading one of her amazing poems, Cocoon, at the end of this episode, so keep listening. Thank you for having me. It was so lovely to meet you guys as well. Nice to meet all of you. And you. Have a fab day. That was a joy. You're all wonderful. You guys as well. (laughs) Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. I see the world as a caterpillar. We haven't escaped from our cocoon. We need change and we need it soon. Progress is something we can't seem to hack. I shouldn't walk down the street in fear of being attacked. But you put a firmer grip on the trigger once you see I am black. I put my fist in the air to show I am proud. You put your hands over your ears because I'm just being loud. We fight for our rights against our ancestors' oppression. You say we are thugs, criminals, full of aggression. I say black lives matter. No, I will not rest. You say all lives matter to protest to my protest. Sigh. Living in a cocoon, we need change and we need it soon. We call ourselves a nation. However, black history isn't a part of our daily education. We know about Hitler, Shakespeare and Boris. What about the others? What about Olive Morris? I'm only telling the honest truth and facts. You put a bullet in his head or a knee on his neck, just because he's black. You see him in need and you lose your sight. Why? Because he isn't white? We are called monsters because of our anger and our rage. Well, we're just frustrated, so aren't we the monsters you made? We refuse to educate ourselves about our culture, background, but rock our braids. You see celebrities doing it and then culture appropriate. This country was rebuilt by the Windrush generation, And now they have to prove they are being refused the occupation and accommodation. I know we are blamed for our conditions. I know you're thinking it, that it's our fault we can't get jobs or have no food in our fridge. Whilst you judge us from over your side, which I call white privilege. Her hair is out. It says straight, neat and fun. Whilst my afro screams scary, aggressive, 
and you couldn't get it done? You label me as dumb, but don't know I have to work twice as hard to earn half your sum. In a cocoon where diversity, equality and acceptance have no room, people say, we are the least racist, but the least is more than we need. People say it isn't as bad as it seems, but we still haven't fulfilled Martin Luther's dream. Rosa Parks didn't get out of her seat, but we are still standing for the disrespect we receive. We cannot allow the world to be doomed. We need change. We need it soon. We cannot stay in this cocoon.